Right, welcome to this tutorial. It's been the most requested for the longest period of time <laughs> on the channel. Uh, if you notice in our games across the years, we've been using these chain link fences. Uh, they're actually scratch built, I made them myself. Uh, so in this video here, uh, I'll show you how to put them together. It'll be a full on tutorial. I've, I've done a walkthrough before, uh, but uh, people have requested exactly how do you make these chain link fences. You can use them on all your battle at uh, field terrain uh, setups for games of 40K. Uh, you can use them for other gaming systems as well, but they're just, they're, they've been a real good job. Uh, and you'll see them featuring in most of our games, just a, a brilliant uh, feature to have on the table. And you can use them as obstacles uh, for your games of Warhammer 40,000. So uh, that's the finished result that you can see here. Now, what I'll show you in this video is how to produce one of these fences, but you can use the same process, same materials, the same technique to create other stuff, uh, such as these new things that I've been working on, so like billboards, propaganda posters, but structured in a way that they'll stand up for you on the table and you can move them around, uh, place them on the board, on top of our buildings and containers and so on. So I'll show you how to do those. Uh, there's another example just here of one that I've put together. The banter propaganda posters in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. So I think these have come together very really nice. Double-sided. Uh, and then structured, built nice and strong here, and then they sit nicely on the board. And again, you can place those on top of buildings or in the streets, or whatever, uh, for your games of 40k. So there's those. Uh, and then, a favourite of mine is building your own walkways. So again, you can see the same process being used as the fences. Uh, you can put together these walkways, which can span across different buildings and structures, linking them together. Uh, and you can see there's a bit of flex with this. Uh, that's built and put together using the same process. So I'll show you how to do a fence in this video, uh, but just use the same process for all the other stuff I've shown. So it's a real sort of accessories tutorial, this one. And it's worth doing, once you've got these, uh, and the, the channel will show you that, that you can just use them in all your games for for years and years. You get so much use out of them. Uh, so a great feature to have. So you can really, if you put the effort in, you've got them to keep and you can use them uh, for all sorts of things on the ball. So materials. I guess first up is this stuff here. People have been asking what about the main structure. Uh, it's this uh, it's plastic rod here. So it's got a bit of flex to it, but also it, it is, uh, it's, it's workable and gluable uh, and paintable as well all in one. So it's good stuff. It's called Plastruct. And it comes in all different lengths. There's a full length there. Uh, but you can get it in, I believe, uh, what's called eye beam. So the shape of an eye, all in different sizes. You've got stronger stuff here. Uh, I think, I guess you call it H-beam, like so. And you can get, uh, there's a bigger version of the I-beam just there. And this stuff starts to get much stronger. You also get ones that are like latticed in between with gaps in between that look particularly good as well. So I, I've i seen these for sale in model railway shops. You can get them, uh, hobby stores. Uh, and I'll show you the packaging to look out for it. So it comes in lengths like this maybe get like half a dozen lengths in a pack and then there's the details there so it's by Plastruct if you google that you'll find them uh, international supplier of architectural educational hobby model parts so uh, the architects use them for building you know model makers use them for making uh, buildings hobby uh, model railway people use them for constructing stuff so uh, it's sort of across the hobby industry that you'll find uh, these materials it looks like they're American, but they're they're uh, available across across the world, I think, and you can order them in. So it's made of styrene, it's a styrene beam. So the sizes here, the three that I've been using, I'll call these out. If you want to match what I'm doing, then you're welcome to do that. Uh, but it's very sort of flexible. You can use your own sizes and, and so on, just follow the same process. Uh, but the code is 90517. I think that's for the smaller uh, beam here. That's for the larger one. That's 7.9 millimeters uh, in size. Styrene eye beam. You get four pieces in a pack for that one. Then the smaller eye beam here is 90515, uh, and that's 4.8 millimeters, about five uh, millimeters in size. Styrene beam, you get five in a pack. Uh, and then the H beam, which I use a fair bit of, uh, is this one here. That's 4.8 millimeters styrene column. It's called, you get five pieces in a pack. Uh, for that, but you can check those out. I think I didn't get these from a model shop. I think I found these on eBay, uh, so they should be readily available enough. And they're they're commonly used amongst model makers uh, for sort of scratch building 
and so on. The historical war games, people use them like World War II buildings and so on. So you should be able to track them down. But it's Plastruct is the name of the country. Brilliant stuff. Easily cut with a knife. Super glueable as well. So uh, brilliant materials to work with. Uh, you're welcome to copy me. Those three sizes that I've pulled out, that you can see here, have been used to build all of this stuff that you see. So every part of uh, these has been built using those materials. Then the secret ingredient, I guess, is this mesh, which is just brilliant stuff. Really do rate it. Again, nice flexible uh, stuff being used. So uh, it is aluminium mesh. Again, I got mine off eBay. It comes in a pack like this. I don't really need to call out the company for this one because there's loads of different people that make it. Uh, it's very, very common. Uh, used for repairing like uh, holes in car body work. It's just an aluminium mesh. Uh, so if you type in car body repair kit or aluminium uh, mesh repair, then you'll see it here. So it's made of aluminium, so it's durable, rust proof, flexible. Uh, but still with enough strength to, to span across these gaps quite nicely. The miniatures will sit on that, no problem. You can do a bit of battle damage as well. It's a nice soft material to work with uh, as far as breaking through uh, and making damage on it and so on. So not really much else to say about that. There's instructions for it there. Usually what the people will do is they'll, they'll use it to span a gap and then put filler across. It just acts as a strong mesh uh, to hold everything in place. So yeah, I mean, you can cut it with scissors as well. It's just brilliant for working with. But I use that for uh, the mesh across here, and then obviously on the chain link fence that makes up the, the fence part just there as well. Those are the main materials. Then on the chain link fence, I used to, on one of the items, I glued it across, didn't look particularly nice. Instead, I've used wire, and this remains unglued, but it is held in place by a couple of wire bits coming through. I found that copper wire is quite good to work with. Uh, so you can get, again, I got this off eBay. Uh, you can choose your thickness on that. Uh, but it, it's strong but flexible at the same time. So I can bend it around these uh, tight bends across here, but it will still hold in place uh, quite nicely. So you can pick that up uh, off eBay. That's a millimeter or two in thickness, but you can get a hold of some of that. And again, these materials that I've called out, they're pretty cheap. The aluminium mesh isn't too expensive, a couple of pounds, I think. You better pick up the wire. A length of that's going to do more than all of this stuff across here and using a tiny bit. Uh, so that's not going to cost very much. And the Plastrux stuff uh, is not too bad on price either. Uh, then, now I've got stuff from Games Workshop. This is from years ago, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, so I'm not sure. I don't think Games Workshop still do this, but it's your razor wire. So it's this stuff here. And that's for your barbed wire, which I then stretch out and put on top. Again, uh, it's used across the hobby scene. A lot of World War II players uh, would use this kind of stuff, so you should be able to track it down. Uh, if you put in, type in model barbed wire or model razor wire, search for that across the internet or on eBay, you should be able to track something down. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem. If you want to do the razor wire finish, I think it looks quite cool on top, just to make it more of a, an obstacle. looks a bit more grim, dark, and harsh uh, if your games are 40k, so you can add that. Uh, and again, a, a pack of that that I've got here is going to do a whole set of uh, chain link fence. No problem. Uh, then you'll want a good pair of scissors for cutting, uh, some clippers and pliers, uh, a, a good sharp hobby knife, cutting board, super glues. So I've got two different types here. I've, these are from Colorforge. Uh, brilliant super glue, really, really good. Thick uh, for this one. So there's a thickness to that on there if you want a, a controlled amount of stuff coming through. I'd, and then I'd shelved this for a while. I don't think there's much use for it. The thin version, which you can hear it there. But that certainly has its uses. Very, very useful indeed uh, for times when you need a quick flow or, it, or super glue to soak through into an area. Uh, and the thin stuff's really good. So I, I work in combination with these two here. Then when you're working, super glue does set quite quick. But if you want to speed that up, which I would highly recommend, and you get a hold of some super glue activator. There's a, a big uh, can of it here. Again, I got this off eBay, I believe. Uh, again, it didn't cost very much at all. So nice and cheap, and it just means you can work at a good pace. Then as far as paints are concerned, so you'll see that this all comes in white. The mesh comes in a light silver and so on. You've got perhaps a bit of copper wire coming through. So you want to tone it down and get onto this grimy uh, kind of metallic stuff going on here. So I spray straight on with... Uh, Games Workshop lead belcher. 
So it's silver, but it's like a deep, darker silver, which is what you want. Uh, I don't want to be putting loads of washes and trying to tone this thing down. So start off with the darker silver uh, here. So it's kind of, it's kind of this color. It's silver, but it's it's got that dark tinge to it, which is perfect. Very, very nice spray indeed. You can color match that quite effectively. It's the same, roughly the same shade, pretty much the same shade here. It's still forged silver. Uh, again, this is from Color Forge. So as that's the outpost, the discount 40k, so you can get a hold of all of your model, model stuff from them, so all your miniatures and so on. But they also do a brilliant range of sprays, uh, like a brilliant diversity with these. Uh, and one of them is this Steel Forge Silver Metallic Spray. Uh, they, they've uh, matched the Games Workshop colors. They're bigger tins as well, 500 milliliters, and the price on these is brilliant. So uh, you can check them out uh, for decent sprays. So Steel Forge Silver from them. Link for them in the video description below. Add, and then add varnish to finish the whole thing off. So the trusty Munitron varnish from Games Workshop. And again, if you want Color Forge, match that with their own matte varnish spray. And again, in the much larger uh, tin, 500 milliliters, a good size tin uh, with that one. And I'm, I'm kind of in the position where I want to spend most of my time painting my models, my miniatures to you know field my armies and so on. I don't want to spend ages on terrain because uh, you can often get disheartened and, and, and start a terrain project or get part of the way through it and sort of give up or shelve it and move on to something else. Uh, so I've been trying to do projects where you hit them and get them done quick, but you get like nice results from it. Uh, so that's sort of the philosophy I've got at the moment. So with these, a uh, nice quick finish with, with these is uh, Agrax Earth Shade. We'll use to shade the whole thing and tone it. Uh, and then a little bit of a highlight uh, that you can bring in with Stormhost Silver. Uh, it's this little paint just there, which is a little brighter silver just to lift the whole thing uh, when you've finished. I also say, I was going to say PVA glue, but you don't need it here. I've used super glue for all of this, even the posters here as well. So uh, I don't think PVA glue is required, just super glue. So uh, a ruler as well. Um, if you want to match what I've got here, I'll call out these sizes quick. So on this walkway that I've done, it is. Again, you don't have to copy this. It's 25 and a half centimeters long. So I do the H beam, one long length, and then across here, the H beam at each end, uh, which in size, I'll give you rough measurements. There's no need for you to copy this precisely, but just to give you an idea. So that's five centimeters across to there. So then uh, I'll show you the gluing when it comes to the fence, but I glue the two ends in, I create a box. Then the struts that run in between uh, are five centimeters apart each time, but they're thinner, and so I use the the thinner I beam to go in between, uh, coming across there, uh, and then glue those in place with the super glue. Flip it over, and then I cut the mesh to fit just a little bit oversized, and then tuck it in. It's a bit fiddly to do it, but then I push and tuck it in, and then when that's in place, uh, I then run the thin super glue in the gaps here like so, activate it, glue it in place, all the mesh sticks in there quite nicely, and the whole thing becomes, it's flexible but rigid uh, here, There's, it's not going to break on you, unless you really hit it hard, so that's held in place like so, so that's how you build that one. And uh, For the posters, or the propaganda uh, posters here, it's the bigger eye beam, you can see the lengths of it just here, that really needs to call out the sizes, uh, you get a hold of your posters from off the internet, so if you type in on Google, uh, Warhammer 40,000 propaganda posters. There's loads that fans have made, uh, and then I just print them out big on just normal paper. Give them a spray of Munitron varnish, and that just soaks into the paper and soaks in with the pigment and the ink, and just links it and ties it all in quite nicely, and gives it a coat of that. Uh, I beam down here, bigger one. Then cut a piece to make the feet. If you go too narrow on it, it's going to fall over a lot easier. This one's got a bit of uh, stability on it. Then if it gets if it gets knocked over in a game, then you just prop it back up again. But that, that sits quite nicely. So two pieces coming across. Again, that's just held there with super glue. I'm not planning to put any kind of stress and strain that seems to hold it just nicely. Uh, again, the eye beam just in between. And then really, the poster I cut it out and then just with thin super glue, run it around this edge and then drop the paper on top and glue it in place like so. And that's uh, you've got your poster. Now there is a gap in between it. I'm wondering if someone was a genius 
that you could feed a wire in that underneath up inside and run some LED bulbs in there and have the posters backlit. <laughs> that would be amazing to do that. Um, so just an idea, but if someone uh, has the technical ability to do that. And then you could uh, run the wire out here and just set the battery underneath then cover it over, put it inside a container, <laughs> an ammunition container or something like that. That would look particularly good. It's just a little idea I had when I was putting these together because there is that there is that gap in between and uh, the light does shine through uh, the paper and you get this sort of silhouette of a design. So that's briefly how I put those together, sort of back to front here. Uh, we've shown you what to do, but just to give you an idea on, on how doable those are. So with this, I'm just going to copy what I've done here. So, because I want to match, I want to continue this set on, so I want the same kind of sizes. And so, I want my height. So we'll just stop and start the video here and follow me along. So 8.5 centimeters for our uprights here. And obviously I'm going to need two of them. So being very careful. And we'll go here and cut these up at 8.5. So I'll just go at this angle so I can get to it. Need to be too precise. Now I'm going to cut into that like so and then snap it. And that's built me one. Then what you can do is you can measure again or you can just use the previous cut as your guide. Just keeping fingers and so on out of the way, being very careful. Marks that. And snap. Okay, so I've got my two my two struts here. So the fence has begun. Then these little off cuts, save them, spray them up silver and just use them as battlefield scatter. You can um, twist them up, bend them up, damage them, and just add them into your terrain. We've got a bit of dam damage, uh, a bit of metal there that look brilliant when you put them in amongst uh, your rubble and so on. So keep those, no waste, uh, and use those as scatter on the battlefield. Or use them on bases for your models and so on. No problem. Right, the next bit's quite tricky. Subtle, but little stands here, so these fences can stand up. And for games that we've played, they seem to just sit there quite nice. It's quite rare they fall over, and this one obviously knocks them. Uh, for that, I use the larger I-beam, uh, like so, and just cut them to fit just there. So I'm cutting down here, taking this off to give my angle, like so. And then I'm just going to come straight across here. So I've done it to there. I then need to cut across here. So I'm cutting it. I'll show you where I am with this. So I'm cutting across here. Like so. And just all the pressure is going down into this mat here. Just keep my fingers back. Okay, so that cuts off there. It's important you've got a cutting mat because all the pressure and the, the sharpness of the blade is just being directed into the mat uh, and you're cutting into that. So we're looking at something like this. So the ridge across here, again, you don't have to copy me, you can make up your own way of doing it, uh, but I've made myself a piece like so and that will go just there. So I'm just going to replicate that. I had, so I'm going to do three more of these. So I've made those. I'd recommend that you build uh, a batch of the original batch that I made I made two of these and then I made four of these longer lengths here so you can do a nice long fence or you can create a box or a box of open access and so on whatever combination you want to do and it seems to work well it generally gives you a good coverage across the board so I'll do four of them uh, I'll give you a measurement on these ones uh, here the struts the uprights are exactly the same uh, but your length across here You'd be cutting those to, I would say, 20 centimetres, a bit more, 20 centimetres and a half, 20.5 centimetres uh, for your length there. It gives you a good size, good length, a bit of fence, like so. And again, it sort of sits up quite nicely. 
Right, next, these struts, so we're going to try and uh, make them up right here. So, just sort of line them up before I start putting glue on. This looks pretty good. I'm happy enough with this. So this piece is ready. Now, I haven't made these for about a decade. <laughs> so, I've got the thicker super glue here. So, it's going to sit quite nicely for me on there. I'm ready to go. Got to be careful with super glue. You can stick your fingers together quite easily. So I'm going to use uh, the edge of my ruler here. If you've got a set square, that's brilliant. I'm just going to use that to make sure that I'm going upright. So, so now I've got myself a 90 degree angle. Now I'll just take my time here because I want this upright. This looks good. Take my beam. Well, the little strut that I've cut here. Push her in. Seems to be sitting there okay. Make sure she's lined up. Nice enough. If I can even just tack it in place, uh, then I'll be able to uh, strengthen it more super glue just after. Used to be on there good enough. Activator. And then that should just set there for me. Yeah, that's setting nicely. Just gonna move it a little bit and make sure it doesn't stick to the... Okay. So, so she's on there like so. And that's been put in up right here. So I want to, uh, that's gone in all right. I want to strengthen it. So I'm going to run a bit more super glue in here. And it, it almost, it won't, it looks like it's been welded. So it doesn't matter if the super glue can be, can be seen, the join that you've made. That's a bad habit here, but I've used my finger just to clear some of it and wipe it onto a tissue. <laughs> or you can just choose tissue, but as long as the tissue gets stuck. That's floating quite nicely. That's looking stronger. Then I'll just activate it because I want to move on. Like so. But uh, just have respect for super glue when you're working with it. It's, it's high attack. It's very super strong stuff. So that's welded in there now. The super glue's gone onto that nice and strong. And again, these the set you're making is not going to come under too much stress and strain. So I'm going to take my next piece. Go to the other side. Line it up first. I'll try another one. I'm almost making a putting a jigsaw puzzle together. This looks great, so I'm just gonna go straight on with this one. And again a blob of super glue along there. Line her up straight. Tuck her in. Yeah, looking alright. Strut looks upright. Looks okay, so I'm going to activate it. Like so, and I've got myself that just there. Now that's obviously going to fall over by itself once you build the whole thing. And you should get that stability there uh, from the fence. So you should be starting to see a bit of a match across here, like so. So I'll just continue on. I'll just, I've just got another one of these to do and that'll be that done. So that's those two done. An alternate way, if this is, sounds a bit too fiddly for you, I quite like the way that's come out. It looks something like that when it's finished. The downside of that is it is quite narrow, so more likely to tip over, but hardly ever. I don't get much, too much of a problem. They just usually sit quite nicely on the board. If you want to go for something that's easier to do and potentially more stable, depending on how large you make the feet, then just cut struts like that and then just stick the pieces directly on top. And again, you could use the same larger H beam for that one. So that one. Then just stick your super glue struts in place like so. I guess a lot of easier to do uh, if you want that, but the, the you can go as wide or as narrow as you want uh, with that one. So either way you want to work it. I've done it this way to match the set. I'm trying to match the same set that I've already got. Uh, but going like that 
it's just a straightforward, if more straightforward, saving more time. And you can go wider with the feet uh, for more stability as well as one of the advantages. So it's up to you how you want to do it, but that's another option, perhaps an easy one. That's the thing with scratch built stuff, you should do it however you want. Um, so you're free to do whichever way you wish. Okay, so the two struts are done. That's our, our fence. We'll do the narrow one, methinks. Now I'm wondering, perhaps 20.5 and 20.5, yeah, I've done it at that size so I can get two out of this length, so or three perhaps out of the, the full length, so keep that in mind, uh, just to make, again, the most economical use uh, out the lengths of these when you get hold of them. So do a bit of mathematics and work out uh, the correct sizes you want to cut them to. So next up, the uh, struts going across, they, they will tuck into the H-beam here, so they'll go in a, a millimetre or two, and again out the other side. So I'm on 90, if I cut these, I'm just too precise again, doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna say 92 millimetres will do. So I'm gonna cut two at that size. So measure it up. Move your ruler. A steel ruler would be good, but I uh, will go 90 and two. I'm just gonna mark that. Take the ruler away. Cross that. Snap it. And then line her up. Cut the next one. That's my two structures. You can imagine that you know, you're going to get a nice conveyor belt, a good production line of these going. These are cut just nicely, same size, uh, and these will span out uh, across, and they'll go in. They'll go in that gap just there. You just super glue them in place, one and two, like so. And again, I want to match the height of what I've got here already. So looking something like that, and they want to put them here and here. So I'm just going to use the previous one as my guide and just hold that there. Again, I've got the thicker super glue because I want the control. Let's drop some of that in there. Put this in. Make sure this is all squared up nicely. And activate that to be held in place. All right, I've dropped a bit of super glue in there. Line them up. I don't want the H beam to go in there. Just gonna move that a little bit just to make sure it's covered in glue. And again, line her up. Now I'm just, I'm not gonna edit this, make it all sleep looking. It is a fiddle. You're gonna have times when you're just trying to get it right. It's scratch built and so it's not it's not like a standard kit you're, you're just building from nothing really okay in position looking okay it's now looking like that oh boy and then the moment of truth so we're now gonna go in between here like so <laughs> so hopefully this <laughs> so hopefully this works so uh, again thicker glue i'm gonna go on the ends this time just so i know exactly where the glue is so let's just go on to that and go on to there. And this time I'm gonna line up on the base here so she's sitting nicely. They seem the same, they seem, they seem to be the same length here. So we're looking okay. Nice gone in. It looks all right. I'm gonna reach very carefully for the activator. You always put a, a bookend or something square along here to hold that in place. And then just drop a bit of activator in here. Okay. Good. Good. And looks square. Okay, I think I've got away with that. <laughs> okay, so, so there you go. That's your structure of that done. Uh, and then I might it seems 
This plastruck stuff seems to work well with super glue. This seems rigid enough. I was going to reinforce it more super glue, but it doesn't seem to need to be done. So that's our structure. And just keep building those. Uh, looking tough enough. And then in games, you know, you're going to move stuff around. Someone knocks the fence over, you know, big deal. Sometimes you, they lay flat quite nicely. And that's maybe one of the advantages of going for these smaller bases. Is that I've, there's been games where I've knocked the fence over a tank and then just planted the tank on top, like driven it over. Looks quite cool. Um, so that's another uh, reason to build it this way. So that's that one. There's the one we've just built. It seems to sit quite nice. All right, I'll just check underneath. And it's not really... If, if there are problems with it and it's you're not happy with how, how well it sits, then you can trim it underneath, but I'm um, loath to do that. I think that's going to just sit okay. It seems fine. So happy enough with that. Structure's done. So the next stage uh, will be your mesh. Uh, here, uh, really what you're doing is you're cutting it so that it reaches the top of this. It goes over a little bit because that will tuck into the H beam for you and then overflows a little bit on this side as well. Obviously better to go a little bit too big than too small, uh, but I'm going to try and cut that across there and then really uh, you want to go to the ground virtually uh, with that as well. So I'm gonna run it all the way to the bottom, uh, like so. So I'm just gonna cut that out. Whilst I've got this in position, I'm, I'm actually holding this in exactly the right spot. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark this with my pen. And then the height of it is about right. So I'm gonna run across here to there. So that's the, now you can see it, yeah, that's the size I'm after. So I'll cut along there, uh, no problem. So for that, I'm just going to use scissors. Now these are really good scissors. These are uh, hairdressing scissors. Um, and you just, they're brilliant for cutting stuff. They're really, really good. So these ones here, and I find them really good for cutting this kind of stuff here. And it should just glide through no problem. So I'm just going to use the pen as my guide. Just go straight to there. Well, one major thing to point out, I've got it right here, but again, well, it's your choice, um, but there's a grain with this. So there's a, a width ways to it. Uh, and then there is a, a, a diamond, sort of a, a longer width to it there. So I do it that, that style. You can go that way if you want to, or you can go that way, but bear in mind there is to add different styles to it so just make sure it's all the same form of them that you do so that's cut out that should fit on here now I think that is uh, a little bit too big for fitting in so it's better to play around with it now and then the height of it is just about right so I'd be happy enough with that so I'm just going to take a bit off the edge as I said earlier, it's better to go too big than too small. So I'm just going to take that off. And again, saving stuff, you can save these little bits for like barbed wire effect on your basing. I've done that plenty of times before. <laughs> so no waste with this project. So I made that a bit smaller. And again, this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to do this tutorial because it's fiddly. <laughs> So, but I've, I'll capture this just to show you what real life is like. So this should fit add in the gap here and then fit in there as well. So look, there's a bit of bend on it. So I'm now going to try and work that in. And it's a case of trying to feed it through like so. here as well if it really won't go in and you've got too much bulge i think there's a bit too much bulge for that so i'm just going to get i'm going to capture this on camera because this is just real life here so it's too big so i'm going to take another little bit off there's no point battling with it just make that a bit smaller and you know what i'm a little bit conscious that this is uh, hitting the ground as well so i'm just going to nip a little bit off the top Tuck that in there. 
tuck that in there. It's got less resistance now, and then it's a case of just feeding that in to this end. Looking quite good now. Yep. I need to pull it up this way a little bit because it's rubbing the ground and then pushing that in. So she's now sitting in between the, the beams here. Now, there's actually no gluing required at this stage. You're trying to get it into position. Glue's messy uh, and you'll, you'll see it and you can make a real mess of stuff. So instead of glue, we use the uh, the uh, copper wire. It's sitting there quite nice. Got ourselves our fence. It's looking quite factory fresh at the moment. So I need a copper wire. I would say it's got to go at around this twice plus there. So you're looking at a length of something like one, two, and a bit. So it's something like that. So now using my clippers here, I'm going to pre-bend this. So I'm going to go, it's basically got to go around this. So I'm going to put a bend, a 90 degree bend here. And then another 90 degree bend. So this is a bit short. I can tell it's a bit too short. So I'm going to go again. Again, this is just showing you this is a scratch building that we're doing. So I'll just capture all of this. Truth be told, this wire is a bit too thick. I'd go for a thinner grade, but I should still be able to work with this. So there's two shorts, so I'm just going to increase the length on this one by about four or five millimeters. So I'll break that off. We'll go again. I'll put a 90 degree bend in that. Yeah, and a 90 degree bend about here. So, I want that to go around this, like that. So it's going to go around there, through the fence, out the other side, and then you're going to bend it back around again is the idea. And that's just going to be a way of holding that in place. And it won't move uh, without having to do gluing, so you're going to get more of a uh, cleaner finish. So, again, I've done this um, two shorts. I'm going to cut a fresh one, uh, but I'll make up some of those. All right, so cut myself a fresh bit. I'll give you the measurement so you can um, not make the same mistake as me here. So I've cut these to so two and a half, just short of three centimetres, three to, between two and a half and three centimetres for size. Uh, if you go for a finer grade, you might need to do uh, as big a bit because it's way over engineered. You're not going to need that much strength. So my fence is, uh, I'm very happy with the placement of it. It sits well. The, the bottom of it's dragging and not, not touching the ground here. And then it's not too long on top. Push that down a bit. That's it. Yeah, so that's all sitting very nicely. Very happy where that is. Gonna add now place this on so you can see I'd need four of them. So one, two, three, four should hold it in place quite nicely. And then it's a case of feeding this through. So looking for a gap in the fence and pushing this in. So there we'll do. There we go, got it. So that's now gone in. Like so. Roll her over. And then we've got that looking like that. So uh, it's, it's a case of bending that round. I reckon I'm gonna nip a bit off of this. <laughs> so we'll take this end off here because it's too long. If you can maybe uh, build these longer and then just clip them after instead of going too short. Yeah. 
pretty much there. I'm going to take a bit more off. That's better. All right, so we're looking at something like that. And then it's a case of bending this over. So. One. I want the two to pass each other. So I'll bend the other one just down next to it. If I can get in there. Squeeze that in place. So to bend this round, this grader wire is too thick here, but I've got a, a solid block and then I can use the back side of these pliers just to push that down. There we go. Okay, so I've done it. So it wrapped it around and sealed it up. Now that's not going to go anywhere. It's just strong. It's not going to break or come apart uh, just there. So I need to repeat that I had it three more times. So one just here, here and here. But uh, getting hold of that copper, I go for a thinner grade, as you can see, you don't need it to be too thick as it becomes a bit more difficult to work with. Uh, but I'll press on and do the other three and that'll hold that fence nicely in place. All right, so done. That's those four in place. Bit of fiddles to it. Again, I'd recommend a lower, thinner grade of wire to make it easier, but it's worked okay. Those have gone through just there and then tucked around the other side like so. There's no gluing required here. There's no mucky glue around the edges. And one of the first ones I made of these, I ran the glue across here, but it looked terrible. You could see it through. Uh, when painted and sprayed up and so this with the no glue option I think it's a lot better it's all held nicely in place sitting well and again we've got ourselves a fence looking all right next bit's the fun part so I'm going to try and make this look a bit battle damaged we're in the middle of a war zone bullets and so on are going to get through people are trying to climb underneath climbing over top over the top and so on uh, so you can use the end of the scissors here as a good blunt but nice tip on that you can use a pen uh, and then just punch your way through uh, here and make some battle damage so it's good enough good enough fun doing it there you go there's a bullet hole pushed through there uh, you can tear it on top and, and bend it down to create that kind of effect lift it up at the bottom split it cut holes in it whatever you want to do but i'm going to bash this up a little bit here make it uneven use my fingernails just to put dents in it just to make it uneven looking so it's an old battle one perimeter fence like so and you can see the, the damage on it coming through so I'm gonna try and beat this up a little bit here and for the next stage so looking something like that bashed up the top bottom made some more holes looking nicely battle damaged now very cool next bit uh, we'll add this on as well I'm gonna paint the whole thing all in one go again just keep it nice and easy so if I was to stretch this out like so it would then run from here to here and so I'm going to use my clippers just to cut a length of that off like so again it's nice bendable workable stuff to hold this in place I found that you can simply split the top of the wire feed this in if I go in here so there's two ways, you can split it to hold it in place, or you can actually feed the wire through. Um, so this endy part, I'm gonna feed the wire in at this end. Hook it through one of the holes, goes through quite nicely. Uh, feed it in and then just bend it around and lock her in place. You can then create a split, drop the wire in, seal it back up and, and bend it in so it holds it in place and again it's only got a sort of a light thing to do here because it's not going to go too go through too much stress and strain so i'm going to uh, bend it back and then run it through around and then bend that in wrap it around a few times so it's right in the fence here it's not going to move that's generally holding nicely in position. So that's it. Got ourselves a wire fence on top. Now razor wire. Let's pull that across a little bit. Brilliant. Really happy with that. So that's come out well. And again, should sit just nicely. Yeah, happy enough. So in, in place, just there. You, you can perhaps see it. This one's come out where it's split. I drop the wire in. 
and then seal it back over again. It's a bit of a fiddle and that just holds that in place just there. But again, that rough kind of look is natural looking anyway, so that's not a problem. But there it is, that's, that's done. So the next stage, we've done all the construction work now, so we're off to uh, the next stage, which is just finishing this thing off. So you take uh, your spray, your lead belcher, uh, all the steel forged silver, and then just give it like a, a thin coat, and then a second coat seems to go. If you go too thick, uh, it starts to pour, and it doesn't react properly, you want it to stick on. So light coat, spray across the entire thing, then a second coat when it's dry, and that should give you that nice deep silver finish across the whole thing. Leave that to dry, and then we're on to the, the finishing stages of painting. All right, so uh, that's two coats, and that's dried. So now it looks something like that, and that just seals the whole thing up quite nicely. It makes it all the same color. So next stage to finish off is very quick. So what we're looking to do is take Agrax Surf Shaker and try and make this just a bit more grimy and realistic looking. A large enough brush, then need to go with a small brush for this one. All right, and then just picking up some of this here. And then just covering the whole thing. So uh, the bars across here, in the gaps, just working the brush in to all the nooks and crannies. Uh, and then ac across the mesh, which will pick up that colour for you. Just working that through. You can see that going on to give you that kind of finish. So I'm just going to run that all the way across. I'm going to run it through the barbed wire. Just a nice large brush, run it through the whole thing. When it comes to the bits like this, to get a smooth finish, just run the brush up nice and smoothly across. And then don't interrupt it and that'll give you a nice smooth finish. So I'm just going to run across the whole thing. Just to add that grimy wash effect. And that's using the Agrax Earthshade. All right, so our uh, fence looks something like this now. Uh, nicely shaded up for you, just that wash. And that's really just made that all nice and grimy and realistic looking for you. So the finishing touch, you don't have to do this, but you can take uh, the Stormhose Silver. That's just to put an extreme highlight on this uh, here. So I've got a real sort of rough brush here. And just taking the paint here and just doing it too thick. I'm not, I'm not going to scrub and dry brush this, I'm just going to pick out the extreme edges, so like the edge, and hopefully you can see that on camera, just pick out the extreme edge, just makes the effect stronger. I'm not going to touch this side here, just to leave it all shaded as it is. Pick a bit off there, go to the other end and do it. Oops, I've rubbed, that's gone onto the bar, so just rub that off. Run down here. Looks fine. Keep it on the inside. Add across the edge of these bars here. Not being too fussy, just lifting it a little bit. I'll do nothing on the other side. Then I might glint across the barbed wire a little bit. Just to give it a bit more of a silver shimmer. A little bit on this side. And then I might scrub across some of the fence here. So quick and easy to do. Bit across here. That just gives it just a nice bit of glimmer. With that silver bit on this side. Just roughly. Across the top here. And underneath. And that's it. Just done that all on camera to show you how quick it is. And that really finishes the whole thing off. So that's the fence stump. Like so, so you can go for that one. As I said already, there's the, the larger one just here. And those should uh, sit nicely for you on the battlefield. So after that, once that's done, uh, really it's just a coat of uh, your varnish. The Munitorum uh, varnish here from Games Workshop. It's, it's brilliant stuff. It'll help. It'll still give you that satin finish. So it'll protect the metallics, give that shimmer to them, but not glossy, not flat mattes. It's that nice balance in between. It's a big fan of the Munitorum varnish. Uh, from Games Workshop. If not, you can use the matte varnish uh, from Colour Forge. Uh, they have uh, matched the Games Workshop spray uh, there for that one. So there's the two options uh, that you can go for. And again, link for them in the video description below. If you want the Colour Forge stuff, and they do that. If you want, they stock Games Workshop, so you can get a hold of the and varnish uh, from them as well. So whichever you prefer. But that's the tutorial for the fencing. Uh, it is a bit tricky. It's one I've been putting off for a while because it's quite tricky. Uh, as you've seen, I've shown you bits on camera where it's a little bit fiddly, but uh, if you can build this and put it together, you've got some nice scratch-built fencing that you can use for your games of 40k. You, know, you can use on your tables, whatever type of table it is, city, industrial, jungle, desert, whatever it is, there's always a space for a perimeter fence. 
uh, here with a nice barbed wire on top to finish off. So that's the tutorial. Keep a look out for more tutorials on the channel. Hope that's been a help. Drop me some comments if you need any help uh, or got any questions at all uh, about this process. Uh, but as I said earlier on, fences you can make. Uh, walkways look fantastic, same process, same painting process, build process and so on. And then these new uh, billboards I've been working on here, you'll see them featuring in our games. Uh, I think they're a great job as well. So there's all different ways, same process, same build, uh, but all different outcomes that you can achieve uh, just by following the steps that you've seen in this video. If you've enjoyed the content here, just leave a thumbs up and a comment, it really helps the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content, including our battle reports. Thanks for watching. And tune in next time.